Well, hopefully it doesn't sound too crazy what we're about to say here. Um, we've got a nice little topic on the review of arc trig derivatives and arc trig integrals. Now, I just want to remind you, arc trig, okay, is not a reciprocal. Um, another way to say arc trig, or let's say arc tan, would be tan inverse. Okay, so these are not reciprocals. These are arc trig or inverse. So let's start off with our arc trig derivatives. So first of all, we need to know the derivative of arc sine and arc tan. And I have arc sine here listed for you. That's du over the square root of 1 minus u squared. Basically, if you don't know that off the top of your head, it's time to get it on a flashcard and start, you know, going through them every night. Arc tan, du over 1 plus u squared. Now, you may might be asking, why is an arc cosine up there? Well, I want you to remember arc cosine is the same thing as arc sine, except because it's a C, we're going to slap a negative in front of it. So go ahead and add that into your notes. Arc cosine, exact same thing as arc sine, just has the negative du. All right, well, once you have the two rules down, quite frankly, it's pretty simple after that. Let's go through a, a couple in practice. All right, so let's dive into one here. We're going to start with a real simple one, and then we'll try to make them a little tougher as we go on. Um, so let's say we want to take the derivative of arc sine of 2x. Okay, so the first thing I do is, you know, I immediately write the rule down. Okay, so I've got this memorized, du over the square root of 1 minus u squared. All right, so clearly you need a u, and then you need to take its derivative. Okay, and this should be just as easy as in everything. If you read it, it says the arc sine of 2x. So guess who your u is? u equals 2x. Therefore, take its derivative of each side. The derivative of u is du. The derivative of 2x is 2. And now watch how simple this is, guys. You're just literally plugging these in the formula. I'm going to replace the du with the 2. The square root of 1 minus, just substitute with parentheses, 2x squared. Almost done, just clean it up. That's 2 over the square root of 1 minus 4x squared. And that's it. That's simple. Okay, now, they can get a little tougher if you get, you know, maybe uglier terms under the radical, but in theory, the calculus is very straightforward. You take your u, your du, you plug it in the formula, and it's just basic algebra. Okay, so let's spice it up, and perhaps this is where we're having difficulty. Let's say we have the arc sine of 1 3rd x. All right, so again, immediately write that rule down. du over the square root of 1 minus u squared. Okay, off to the side. u equals 1 3rd x. du, then, is equal to 1 3rd. Again, you just did the calculus. The calculus part is over. This is just the basic algebra cleanup. Substitute in the du, one third, all over the square root of one minus one third x squared. All right, so again, it looks uglier, but it's really just cleaning up at this point. So I've got one third divided by the square root of one minus, one third squared is obviously one ninth and x squared is x squared, so I'm going to say this becomes x squared over 9. 1 third times x squared, obviously there. I want to be clear that this x is on the top, otherwise it would have said 1 over x. All right, now you basically have two steps left. Underneath this radical, we have a number plus a fraction. We clearly have to add those together. And again, just basic arithmetic here. 1, if my denominator is 9, is really 9 ninths, so I'm getting 9 minus x squared all over 9. Okay, so again, 9 ninths minus x squared over 9, common denominator is 9, 9 minus x squared. Now, again, the neater you keep this, the easier this is going to be. Watch this step. 1 third divided by, now you can't take the square root of both of them, but I can split them up. 9 minus x squared and the 9. Which one is a legal mathematical move? Okay, hopefully you're saying this 9 turns into a 3. You cannot, let me repeat, cannot break this up because of the minus sign. Now, if two functions have the same denominator, they cancel. So I get 1 over the square root of 9 minus x squared. And that's it. All right, so like I said, we'll practice a couple more. We'll get a good feeling for it. And uh, hopefully we've got this uh, review cleaned up then. All right, next example, arc sine of x over 4. All right, this is where the practice comes in. Pause it. Don't cheat yourself. Pause it. See what you can get through, and then compare with mine. All right, so I've got my u is 1 4th x, my du is 1 4th, my du over my u. 
All right, I just have to get, it's just algebra, remember, we're just cleaning this up. So I've got 1 fourth over, this is really 16 minus x squared all over 16. Okay, separate the radical. So it's the square root of 16 minus x squared all over the square root of 16. This denominator is a 4. Look, denominators match. Those disappear, and I get 1 over the square root of 16 minus x squared. Again, hopefully pretty straightforward after those cleanup steps. All right, let's try some arctan. Um, so again, I say the same thing, except change my formula. du over 1 plus u squared. And just identify your u and your du. My e is my u is e to the 2x. My du is leave it alone times the derivative of the exponent. So 2e to the 2x. Substitute them in. 2e to the 2x all over 1 plus e to the 2x squared. And I'm just going to clean that up. So I get 2e to the 2x all over 1 plus power to a power here, guys. Of course, it's multiply e to the 4x. And like I said, we'll try one uglier one. Let's say tan inverse or arctan of, let's go 1 fourth x. Okay, so similar to the arc sine one, but obviously we're going arctan. So formula, du over 1 plus u squared. Okay, off to the side, u is 1 fourth x, du is equal to 1 fourth. Just some nice substitution, the calculus part's over. 1 fourth over 1 plus x squared over 16. Okay, so again, my u squared, This I can't stress enough, a couple of us keep writing this wrong, this is really x over 4, so that's x squared over 16. I'm going to add my denominators here, so I'm going to get 1 fourth all over 16 plus x squared all over 16. Okay, now I can't just cancel the denominators because they are not equal. Let me say that again, they are not equal. All right, so you can do any sort of algebraic move that you want. Perhaps this is an easy one. Um, I could leave the top fraction, change division to multiplication, and multiply by the reciprocal. That's one option. Um, and that goes into that four times. And I would say that's 4 over 16 plus x squared. Um, clearly, that's not your only option. You could multiply, you could say the common denominator is 16. You could multiply the top and bottom by 16. Those cancel. That turns into a 4 just like that. You know, do whatever move works for you. But hopefully we all end up with the same answer. All right, well, we're ready to start the Arctrig integral portion of our review video tonight. So hopefully you're feeling confident or more confident about the derivatives. Okay, now the integrals look a little different. So let's get this down. We have du over the square root. And I know your gut wants to say 1 minus u squared, but that's not it when we integrate. It's actually a squared minus u squared. Okay, so I get where the misconfusion comes in. We want this to be 1 minus u squared, but again, when we integrate, it's a squared minus u squared. And this is equal to, it looks like the derivative of arc sine, so we're going to say that's arc sine of u over a plus c. Okay, now one of your classmates had um, a great little mnemonic trick he used. Uh, he thought Under Armour to keep this straight, U over A instead of A over U. So, you know, any trick you can come up with, you know, make sure you share it with everyone. That's a great idea. The second one is the integral of DU. And again, I know your gut wants to say 1 plus U squared, but it's actually A squared plus U squared when we integrate. And that's equal to 1 over A arctan think Under Armour, u over a plus c. So the other thing I want to make sure we keep clear is because we're integrating, okay, we do actually use u sub, all right? Unlike when we derived, it's not actually a u sub, it's a u and a du, but we actually do u sub with our integrals. All right, example one, here we go, arc trig integral. All right, so I want you to keep in mind, I'm going to take this one pretty slow. Arc trig is not the first thing I'm thinking of. I am trying a u sub first. That is what hopefully a normal calculus student is thinking. So I get du equals negative 2x dx, du over negative 2x. If I were to substitute that in, I would get 5 over the square root of 9 minus x squared, and I'm going to replace that dx with du over negative 2x. Now maybe you're thinking that works. I mean, I hope not. Maybe you are. You can clearly pull out the 5 over negative 2, but what is left over? 
Okay, you cannot pull out a variable. You cannot pull x out. And x isn't going to cancel. So this is why I know u sub fails, but I have to try it first. Okay, now I'll get creative and say, all right, now it must be some arc trig integral. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the 5 because I know the formula is du over a squared minus u squared. So the 5 is going to come out, and that's going to be 1 over the square root of 9 minus x squared dx. Okay. And then the next thing I do is I write what the equation is supposed to look like. It's supposed to be du over the square root of a squared minus u squared. And if I can make it look like that, then I know I can do this. So I say to myself, okay, what does this 9 have to be so that it's a term squared? This has to be a 3 squared minus, this has to be the quantity x squared. So now I've clearly identified my a and my u. So off to the side, a equals 3 and u equals x. Therefore, du is equal to dx. Now I'm going to use substitution. I'm going to leave this 5 out front. Okay, I'm going to say this is 1 over the square root of a squared minus u squared. I can officially say that. And obviously my du, I'm substituting in or my dx, I'm substituting in du. Now I officially have the arc trig integral, and I can just put it all together. I have 5 times, this is arc sine of, think Under Armour, u over a, x over 3, plus c. And that's it. All right, you just have to take your time and really keep showing these steps and show what each term needs to be. Let's try another one. All right, number 2. The integral of 5 divided by the square root of 9 minus 4x squared. All right, so I, let's mentally do the u sub. u equals 9 minus 4x squared. du equals negative 8x. Will that cancel, or will you have an x left over? Okay, well, there's no x in the problem to cancel with that x, so I know it fails. Okay, so my goal is to make it look like the arc sine integral. And again, let's get that on paper. It's du over the square root of a squared minus u squared. Okay, so you try to rewrite this. How can you rewrite 9? Well, that's the quantity 3 squared. How do you get a 4x if you have to square something? Who would you square? Hopefully you're saying 2x. 2x squared is 4x squared. So off to the side, I need to say my a value is 3. My u value is 2x. So my du is 2dx. So I actually get du over 2 is equal to dx. Remember, you need to solve for dx because you have to substitute it into that dx. All right, now we're ready to put this together. This 5 is allowed to come out front. So I'm going to get 1 over the square root. Um, this is going to become a squared minus u squared. And in place of dx, I'm putting du over 2. So I can actually pull out a 5 halves. This half is coming out. The integral of du over the square root of a squared minus u squared. Then I just say to myself, okay, I get 5 halves, arc sine, under armor u over a, 2x all over 3, plus c. If at any point I'm talking too fast, make sure you go back, rewind it, and try it again. All right, next one. Again, u sub first. If my u is 5 plus 9x squared, I get du equals 18x dx, du over 18x. Okay, the 7 and the 18 can come out, but I'm left with this x. So again, that's why u sub fails. Okay, so I say, okay, it's got to be something tricky, hopefully arc sine. Now I'm going to try to rewrite this. So I'm going to start with the actual rule. It's du over a squared plus u squared. That means I need to get two squared terms. Now, we haven't seen like an odd number in a while. We've seen all these perfect numbers. What would you square to get 5? Just use some common sense. What would you square to get 5? Hopefully you're saying radical 5. And what would you square to get 9x squared? Hopefully you're saying 3x. So off to the side, I'm saying u is equal to, I'm sorry, a is equal to radical 5. u is equal to 3x. Therefore, du is equal to 3dx and I get du over 3 equals dx. I need this step because I have to substitute into that dx. Um, again, you can pull out the 7, and I would get 1 over a squared plus u squared, which is the rule, and in place of dx, du over 
3. So I can pull out one more time. I can pull out the 7 over 3, and I've got my du over a squared plus u squared. Now I can officially rewrite it as an arc trig integral. All right, so I have the 7 thirds. Remember, arc tan has the 1 over a. So I'm going to say 1 over radical 5, arc tan, under armor, u over a, 3x over radical 5, plus c. All right, our last example is going to be a definite integral, which means it has bounds, and you'll have to evaluate the inverse trig function. All right, so again, do your u sub, 4 minus x squared, you get negative 2x, the x isn't going to cancel, u sub fails. Okay, so now my goal is to rewrite it as an arc sine or arc tan. So I'm going to say my rule to myself is du over the square root of a squared minus u squared, and I need to get each of these terms squared. So I'm hopefully we're going with 2 squared minus x squared. Okay, so off to the side, my a is equal to 2, my u is equal to x, so I get du equals dx. Alright, so I'm going to say, and I'm going to leave my bounds off for a moment, and I'm going to say this is, let's see, du over the square root, this is very nice, of a squared minus u squared. So I've got my arc trig there, and I'm going to change my bounds because I'm doing u sub. The 0, if I plug it into my u, becomes a 0, and the 1, if I plug it into my u, becomes a 1, very convenient, and I'm going to integrate. So I've got arc sine, um, and I'm going to leave it as u over a, under armor, and I'm not going to say plus z, um, c, c, I'm going to say from 0 to 1. Now I'm going to say that's arc sine of u over 2 from 0 to 1, so I'm going to get arc sine of 1 half minus arc sine of 0. And remember, arc just means work backwards, okay? This is the exact value. This is the trig function. You're basically finding the angle. Whose angle are you if your sine of who equals a half? Sine of what angle equals a half? Hopefully you're saying sine of 30 or pi over 6 minus the sine of what angle equals zero? Okay, sine of zero. So my final answer is just pi over six.